In this week's weekend project, we're going to build a simple wireless motion alarm system. It's a wireless device you can use to monitor movement for surveillance. Whenever the transmitter detects movement, it sends a signal to the receiver and warns you with an LED indicator as a silent alarm. Let's start with the things that you will need. For the prototyping stage, you'll need two Arduino Uno boards, a PIR sensing module, a transmitter and receiver module, a pair of switches, an LED, and a 470 ohm resistor. Let's talk about the PIR sensor. The module is equipped with a chip, some components, and some knobs for adjustments. It uses an infrared sensor for detecting motion. Using the module is quite simple. It has three pins. One for the positive, one for the negative, and the middle is the digital output. To show you how it works, I'm connecting the positive pin of the module to the positive rail of the breadboard and the negative pin to the negative rail of the breadboard. To show you how the digital output of the module behaves, I'm connecting an LED and a 470 ohm resistor in series from the digital output to the ground or the negative pin. The module has an internal regulator so you can supply 5 to 20 volts to it. I've set my bench power supply to 5 volts since it's the Arduino's operating voltage. As for the adjustment knobs, the right knob is for the delay. Turning the knob clockwise would give it a longer trigger duration and turning it counterclockwise would give it a shorter duration. The delay selection would range from 0.3 seconds to 5 minutes. Take note that the slightest turn of the knob would drastically increase the delay since you are dealing with increments of time values in seconds. Here's what I mean. 20 minutes later. So if you want to have the fastest refresh rate, you might want to turn it all the way counterclockwise for the shortest duration. As for the left knob, it's used for the distance range detection. Turning it clockwise would give you the farthest detection range and turning it counterclockwise would give you the shortest detection range. Here's an example with the knob tuned in all the way counterclockwise. Turning it all the way clockwise gives you the maximum range detection of 7 meters. And just to show you how sensitive it is, the sensor detects motion the slightest movement from afar. You might want to reduce the range by a tad to prevent false detection. I usually tune it one-third away from the maximum setting. Now let's talk about the transmitter and the receiver modules. This is one of the cheapest radio frequency modules you can find for Arduinos. It has a transmission frequency of 433 MHz and a transmission range of 100 feet. The one on the left is the transmitter and the one on the right is the receiver. For this cheap module, transmission of data is just one way. With the help of an Arduino library, you can transmit characters or strings of data to an Arduino. For the transmitter, you have one digital pin. The middle pin is for the positive end of a 5 volt power source and the pin on the other end goes to the ground pin of the power source. Same goes as for the receiver. There are 4 pins on the receiver but they're actually just 3. You have a ground pin that goes to the ground of your power source, both pins on the middle are just tied together to a digital pin, and the last pin goes to the positive 5 volts of a power source. Both module requires an antenna, but the antennas doesn't come with it when you buy the module. So you have to make it by yourself. The antenna pin on the transmitter is labeled, well as for the receiver, it's right over here without a label. For the do-it-yourself antenna, I'm basing this on a quarter wave antenna with a length of 165 millimeters. For this, I'm using a piece of solid wire. Use a ruler to carefully measure the length of the wire. Don't cut it far off from the given length because that would affect the range. Adding an antenna would extend the transmission range up to 100 meters. You'll be needing two antennas, one for the transmitter and one for the receiver. Solder an antenna to the antenna pin of the transmitter and solder another antenna to the antenna pin of the receiver. And now your receiver and transmitter are ready for wiring. The receiver device is quite simple, just follow this diagram. The VCC pin of the receiver goes to the 5 volt pin of the Arduino, while the ground pin of the receiver goes to the ground pin of the Arduino. You can connect either of the two middle pins of the receiver to digital pin number 2 of the Arduino. For the indicator, you can replace the LED with a buzzer, but I wanted it to become a silent alarm so I went with an LED. 
If you're going with an LED, you'll have to solder a 470 ohm resistor in series. Then connect the LED to pin 13 and the ground of the Arduino. Now let's assemble the transmitter. Here's a diagram of the wiring. Let's start by connecting the VCC pin of the motion sensor to the Arduino's 5V pin. The sensor's digital output goes to pin number 2 of the Arduino, while the ground of the Arduino goes to the sensor's ground pin. The VCC pin of the transmitter module goes to a 5V pin of the Arduino. The ground pin of the transmitter goes to the ground pin of an Arduino. And the data pin of the transmitter goes to pin number 3 of the Arduino. And now you have the assembled devices. We're not done just yet because we need to upload the program. Now let's program the Arduino. Download the zip file that I provided from the links below. This one doesn't have a virus so click the download anyway. Once downloaded, extract the zip file to your desktop. Click on the folder and you'll find two main folders. If this is your first time using an Arduino, you can find the installer from the first subfolder. Then install it to your PC. If you're using a generic Arduino Uno clone like me, you'll have to open the second subfolder and install the Arduino clone driver. Next, we'll need to install the virtual wire library. Simply locate the system file folder of the Arduino software. Under that, you'll find the library folder. Then open the third subfolder of the package file and copy the virtual wire folder to the Arduino library folder. Without this folder, you'll receive an error when you try to upload the program to the Arduino. Finally, let's program the Arduino. On the second main folder of the file package, you'll find the codes for the transmitter and the receiver. Then open both files with the Arduino software. Connect your receiver device to a USB port. Once your computer has detected the Arduino, go to your tools menu and select the model of your Arduino board. You'll also have to select the port where your Arduino device is connected and it's usually the last port. Then grab your transmitter's Arduino and upload the transmitter program to that Arduino. If you want to know how the program works, I have left some comments on the codes to explain the purpose of every line of code. Once you have successfully uploaded the programs on each Arduino, you can test them by connecting each Arduino to a USB port or a power bank. When motion is detected by the PIR sensor, the transmitter Arduino sends a character through the wireless module. When the receiver Arduino receives that specific character, it tells the LED to light up. When there is no motion, the LED is turned off by default. At this point of the project, you're pretty much done. All you have to do is to put the receiver and the transmitter inside a plastic enclosure or whatever kind of enclosure you have lying around. Now you need to supply power to the Arduino as well. You can do that by connecting a USB power bank on the USB port of the Arduino or you can connect a battery directly to the DC jack or in between the ground and the VIN pin of the Arduino. Now the VIN and the ground are pretty much tied together to the DC jack so they're pretty much the same. Well this thing is supposed to be some kind of a spy equipment but judging by the size of the Arduino Uno it's a bit conspicuous if you're going to put this inside a plastic enclosure. Now I should have sticked with an Arduino Nano, it's pretty much the same thing, but the problem is the world is on quarantine and I have no access to an Arduino Nano because most of my Arduino Nanos are installed on some of my other projects. So as of the moment, I'll stick to whatever I have and try to shrink this to the smallest possible way I can. And for the bonus content, if you have experience in PCB fabrication and surface mount soldering, you might want to check on this part. You can download the blueprint for the PCB layout and the parts placement for building a smaller version of this project. Once you've finished fabricating the PCB, you are ready for soldering. Let's start by building the transmitter. There's a technique I usually do when I'm finished prototyping an Arduino project. I usually use my heat gun to desolder that mega chip with a final sketch of the code uploaded on the chip. And that mega chip can be used as a standalone Arduino. Without the UART circuitry and the unused pins, you can shrink down your Arduino projects to the smallest way possible. If this is your first time soldering surface mount components, I'm uploading a tutorial about it in the near future. In the meantime, there are dozens of good videos out there sharing tips on how to solder them properly. I've designed the board in such a way that the transmitter module would be bridged together by a mill header and solder it like a backpack. The PIR sensor shares the same concept but this time with a female header. 
For the enclosure, I decided to use my 3D printer. I used SolidWorks to design the 3D model. The SDL file can be downloaded from the links below. After your 3D print has finished, you might want to sand and paint the enclosure. Once you're done doing that, carefully mount your PIR sensor with the proper orientation. You'll need some M2 screws to mount it in place on the enclosure. You may omit using nuts because you can force screw it to the board to remain intact. To save battery, I'm adding a switch so I can turn it on and off whenever I'm not using the transmitter. After doing so, you can connect a 9V battery clip in series with the switch to the power input of your PCB. I've designed a board to use the 78L05 which is the smaller version of the 7805 regulator so you can supply it with a power source ranging from 5 to 35 volts. In my case, I decided to use a 9V battery because it's pretty common. And now you have your wireless motion transmitter. Now let's build a silent alarm receiver. I'm going to do the same thing but this time I'm removing the chip with the receiver program in it. For the passive devices such as the resistors, LEDs, and the capacitors, I decided to use the 0805 package since it's small and it would be easy for you guys to solder compared to the smaller version, the 0603. The regulator on the other hand is an SOT89, the smaller version of the 7805. Same thing goes for the receiver module, I'm using 4-pin nail headers to link it to the PCB. I ran out of 9V battery clips for the receiver. Well, since the world is on quarantine due to the COVID-19 pandemic, I have nowhere else to buy it from. Instead of waiting for weeks for an online purchase, I decided to salvage a makeshift battery clip from an old 9V battery. Once you get your clip, you can solder some wires and connect it to the power input of your receiver's PCB. To prevent the metal plates from making contact to the PCB, you can cut a piece of padding tape which would also double as an adhesive. Just peel the tape and mount your circuitry on the clip. I then wrapped it around with a piece of zip tie to secure it in place. And finally, you can solder the wires from your 9V battery clip to your receiver circuit. And now you're done. If you like this project, don't forget to press the like and the subscribe button. Thanks for watching.